Magandang araw ka learners. Welcome once again. Are you a member of a group? Perhaps you're a member of a choir, dance troupe, or a barcada. What made you join this group? Do you share common interests with your group members? How did your group start? Who formed your group? A cooperative is also a group of people with a common bond, working together to achieve a common goal. A cooperative strives to make the lives of each member more progressive. How do you form a cooperative? What are the necessary documents that you need to submit? Who makes up a cooperative? Who manages it? There are two modules on cooperative. Be sure you have studied what is a cooperative first before you proceed with this module. Lesson 1. Let's form a cooperative. How do you form a cooperative? What are the things that you need to do? Where will you register your cooperative? After studying this lesson, you should be able to identify the steps in forming a cooperative as well as the documents that you need to submit, differentiate the articles of cooperation from bylaws, and compute the total number of parts of the authorized share capital and the minimum pledged and paid up shares of a cooperative. Cooperative. What are the steps in forming a cooperative? Are there any requirements that must be submitted? Here is Mr. June Rivera, Chairman of Barangay Olivaro Multipurpose Cooperative, to explain these things. Listen and remember the things that he will say, so that if you plan to organize a cooperative in the future, you will know what to do. Hello, I'm Mr. Rivera. Last year, when we decided to form our cooperative, we went to the Cooperative Development Authority to ask about the steps we needed to take in forming a cooperative. These are the steps that they advised us to follow. Step 1. Individuals who are interested in forming a cooperative should organize themselves into a core group. The first activity of the core group is to study the economic condition of the community. Core groups should answer these questions. Number 1. What are the problems in our community? Number 2. Is there a need for a cooperative in our community? Number 3. Will people patronize the products of our cooperative? Number 4. Can we find persons who will manage the cooperative? The result of this activity will be the basis for making an economic survey later on. Step 2. The core group will then conduct a pre-membership seminar. In this seminar, they will share information about cooperative ideas and practices with their fellow barangay members. This is to encourage them to join the cooperative. The core group can ask a cooperative specialist from the CDA to help conduct the seminar. Step 3. After the seminar, conduct your first general meeting. These are what you should accomplish during the meeting. Have a final list of your members. Agree on the type of cooperative that you will form, as well as the name of your cooperative. Elect the members of the board of directors and members of the different committees. Step 4. The chairman, together with the documentation committee, will prepare the following documents needed in registering the cooperative. A statement describing the structure, purpose, and economic feasibility. A legal document signed by each of the organizers. It states the name of the cooperative, goals and objectives, the place of operation, list of incorporators, and other information. Sets of rules adopted by a cooperative for the management and regulation of its members and its activities. Step 5. Register your cooperative at the Cooperative Development Authority. You will pay a registration fee which shall not be less than 250 pesos. After evaluating the documents that you've submitted, the CDA will issue issue a certificate of registration to your cooperative. Remember what an economic survey is? It is one of the documents required when registering a cooperative. Here is a sample economic survey. Study and analyze its parts. Part 1. General Information. It contains the following information. Proposed name, kind of cooperative, member group, address of the cooperative, Number of original members Proposed number of increased membership for the following years First year, second year, third year Part 2 Objectives of the cooperative Which contains the following Primary objective Secondary objective 
Proposed business, the product or service to be offered by the cooperative. Part 3, economic and technical conditions regarding the business, which will answer these questions. Are there other organizations like your cooperative in your proposed area that offer the same products and services your cooperative will be offering? If there are, state the total number of businesses they operate. How many employees are there and where will the cooperatives get the people needed to run the business? What machinery or equipment will the cooperative need to run its business? Do the officials or employees or members need special training to be able to run the business of the cooperative? Considering the present situation in your area, explain how the cooperative will succeed in running its business. Part 4. Financial Aspect That will answer the following questions. Where and how will the cooperatives get its capital to run a business? State whether it is from contributions or loans or donations or funds from other organizations. How much is the cooperative expected to earn during the first year of operation? On its second year? On its third year? How much will the cooperative need to run its business during the first year? On its second year? On its third year? Is the cooperative planning to invest? If yes, what investment and when? Part 5. Structure and Management Which answers Who will be assigned to manage the daily operations of the cooperative? How many people will compose the cooperative's board of directors? What will be the role of the board of directors? Will the cooperative have an audit committee? Will the cooperative have a credit committee? Will the cooperative pay an accountant or bookkeeper? What will the salary of the following personnel be? You have just seen the economic survey. Now, we will study the Articles of Cooperation, another document required in registering the cooperative. This is a legal document which means that it should contain the seal and signature of a notary public. It must include the following information. A. The name of the cooperative. The name must include the word cooperative. B. Purposes and scope of the business. C. The term of existence. D. The area of operation or the mailing address of the cooperative's main office. E. The names, nationalities, and mailing addresses of its incorporators. The incorporators include the members of the core group, board of directors, and members of different committees. They shall not be more than 15 persons. F. Common bond of membership. The members of the cooperative may either be residing or working in the intended area of operation. G. The list of names of the directors who shall manage the cooperative. H. The amount of its share capital, as well as names and addresses of its contributors. Another important document is the bylaws of the cooperative. Here is an example. The bylaws of each cooperative shall provide goals and objectives, membership, which includes the qualifications for admission of membership, payments to be made, and benefits of being a member, the rights, responsibilities, and obligations of each member, the circumstances under which a member may be removed or terminated, and the conditions under which the transfer of a share or interest of the members shall be allowed. C. Rules on agenda, place, manner of calling, and quorum on meetings and elections. D. Powers and duties of the General Assembly, Board of Directors, and other officers. Their qualifications and disqualifications. E. Sources of funds. F. Custody and investment of net surplus. Who will handle the money earned and saved from the business activities of the cooperative and where to invest it? G. Accounting and auditing systems. H. Manner of lending and borrowing of money. I. Distribution of net surplus. J. Adopting and amending bylaws. K. Settlement of disputes among members and officers. L. Other matters referring to the activities of the cooperative. In addition to the requirements mentioned earlier, the Articles of Cooperation shall be accompanied by the following Bonds of Accountable Officers Sworn Statement of the Elected Treasurer certifying that at least 25% of the authorized share capital 
has been subscribed and at least 25% of the total subscription has been paid. The paid up shares shall not be less than 2,000 pesos in any case. You need capital to run a business. For example, if you want to put up your own piggery, you will need money to buy pigs, materials for building pig pens, and others. In the cooperative, capital is also needed. You need to set an amount that is sufficient to finance its business operations. The Cooperative Development Authority, CDA, will then approve this. This is called authorized share capital. It is divided into parts which the members will subscribe to in the form of shares. This means that each member will contribute money to come up with this capital. How much will each member give? The amount of money that each member will give depends on the number of shares that he or she will subscribe to. To make this clearer, let us first compute the total number of parts of the authorized share capital. Let's say that the authorized share capital is 500,000 pesos. You will divide this into parts. But before you can do that, you must set the price per share. The officers and general assembly of members will determine this price or amount. The amount should be reasonable so that the members can afford it. Let's say that the price of share is set at 100 pesos each. If we have the price per share, we can compute the total number of parts of the authorized share capital. Here is the formula. Authorized share capital divided by price per share is equal to total parts. So 500,000 pesos ASC authorized share capital divided by 100 pesos PPS price per share equals 5,000 PP total parts. After computing the total number of parts of the authorized share capital, the next thing to do is to have the members subscribe or make a pledge on the shares. The number of shares that a member will subscribe or pledge is called pledged shares. Suppose Mr. Dajos is a member of a cooperative and he subscribes to 200 out of the 5,000 total parts. Remember that each share is priced at 100 pesos each. Let us compute the total price of Mr. Dajos's pledge shares. 200 or the PS pledge share times 100 pesos or the PPS price per share is equal to 20,000 pesos is the total price of shares. Mr. De Dios has 200 pledged shares in the cooperative. The total amount or price of this is 20,000 pesos. Is he required to pay this amount in whole? No, he may give any reasonable amount and pay the remaining balance by installment. The number of pledged shares that a member will pay is called paid up shares. Suppose Mr. De Dios pays 1,600 pesos. How do we compute for his paid up shares? Look at the following computation. 1,600 pesos or the AP amount paid divided by 100 pesos or the PPS price per share equals 16 is the paid up shares. Wow! Daming numbers! Buti na lang tapos na tayo ka-learners! See you again on our next lesson! Paalam!